Hey guys, Scott Phillips from scottphillipstrading.com. Today we're heading into the 4th of July holiday and uh, the tape is thin and we've got a half day of trading today. So I thought I'd show you one of the production setups that I use in my own systems. I use this setup every day. I've used it every day since August 14. Uh, I've got a huge volume of data on it. I take uh, 350 odd trades a year with this. So there's a thousand trades of, of, uh, of real world data backing this up over a number of years. And uh, I've got an excellent uh, idea of the statistics behind the, uh, uh, behind the system and how it behaves. So anyway, um, I promise to show you everything and, and this is everything. This is, uh, this is the meat of what I do. So what we're looking for here is a trend following setup in the direction of the dominant trend. Now, for the first element that we need for a sell is that the market is trending down. Now, I tested a bunch of different things uh, for trend filters. Uh, Mole from Evil Speculator and I, we went just through the ringer with this for a, like a long, long time. Uh, we tested complicated things. We stole things off quant guys. And you know what works nearly as well as the really complicated stuff is just one moving average is lower than another moving average. So here, what we have is the 8 EMA and the 21 EMA. Now those EMAs don't mean anything at all. I just used them in another system and it was just it was just convenient to use the same uh, the same chart set up across all my systems. So anyway, while this blue line, the 8 EMA, is below the purple line, we're only looking for cells. Okay, and what we're looking to do is wait for a pullback which touches either of these two lines or both of these two lines. And so you can see here we have one here and now we have another one here. Uh, okay, so, so first of all we want the market trending down and then we want a shooting star candle. Now the definition of the shooting star candle is that it has to close in the lower half of the range, check. It has to have an upper wick, this section, which is equal to or greater than twice the real body, which is the, which is the length of this little crosshatch here. And we clearly have that. So we have a, we have a cell set up complete. Now, I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see it really clearly. What we're going to do is we're going to place an order one tick below the daily low to sell. Now, where do I place my stop? I place my stop at the daily high with this setup, not one tick, uh, not one tick above like usual. And the rationale behind that is we is we did a huge amount of back testing, and on balance, it was a better it was a better risk reward to place the stop at. At the uh, at the high of the, the setup bar, you could place it one tick or even a couple of ticks above. The wider you the wider you place your stop, it's the uh, it improves the win rate at the expense of risk reward ratio. So anyway, this is the setup. Um, there's some other appealing things going on about this at this present time, which make it you know more appealing than it ordinarily would. Most notably. We have a uh, we have a strong bear move, which is running out of steam. You can see if we if we zoom in, we have a trading range. We have an attempted breakout of that trading range, which has failed. We have another attempt at breaking out the trading range which has failed. At this point the fix is in we can say that it's probably going to at least test the bottom of the trading range. Here it's tested the bottom of this trading range around here and either at this bar or this bar Depending on how you, depending on how you're looking at it, we can reasonably say the fix is in, and we're looking at an extended move because we've got you know 30 days of sideways garbage action, and then we've got a breakout. We can expect that to go on for a little while. 
And so we have a really nice measured move from from here to here. We've got uh, we've got a straight shot down, and you can see just before it starts to paint sideways consolidation, the bars start to overlap quite a lot. So what I mean is that from 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 this bar to this bar, we have very little overlap. We have an inc we have an increase in range. We have an expanded range. So what that tells us, when when the sellers control the open and the close, the sellers have got it on cruise control all day. And then we go to the next day, and the sellers have opened near the highs and closed near the lows, close at the lows. That means that the sellers controlled the start. The, the sellers control the, the finish, they control the open and the close, sellers are winning. There's absolutely no sign of any buying pressure at all. Now, the, the very next day, it's subtle, but we can see the very first signs that we're starting to get two-sided price action. So what I mean is that if we look closely at this bar, this bad boy right here, we can see just a, we can see just a very small upper wick and a very small lower wick and we can see just a little bit more overlap, maybe 30% overlap. So what that tells us is that the sellers are still in control, but it's not quite the punching that they were getting a couple of days ago. Okay, so there's no reason to get long. We'd still be comfortable being short. But what we're seeing is that short term, it's just a little bit oversold, and we can expect uh, an attempt to, uh, to equalize the price action. The next bar, this bar here, We've got exactly the same thing, but more of it. So we've got more upper wick, more lower wick. The lower wick is slightly bigger than the upper wick. So what that tells us is that the sellers are starting to reject the proposition. But we still have a down day. It's still cruising down the outside of this lower Bollinger. It's, the sellers have got it in control, but they aren't having it all one way. Now, the next bar here is really quite interesting. So we have a very small range. So what that tells us is that uh, when you have a small range, the market is trying to decide on a direction. And, it, and, and, uh, and, and we have relatively equally balanced buyers and sellers. So the sellers couldn't push it down below the daily low, and the buyers could, and the buyers couldn't push it up at all. So the sellers are still in control, but we can reasonably say they're weakening because the distance they're able to push it each time was okay, then stronger, then not quite as strong, then not quite as strong again, then weaker again. So we're, what we're seeing is a selling move, which is which is starting to run out of steam. At this point, if you're short here. If you're short here, you're probably still comfortable and you're probably still holding, but this next bar here would probably upset me if I was holding short. If I was holding short from there, I'd look at that and go, wow, that's not quite right. That's not, uh, that's not what I'm looking for. So what we have is a transition into a trading range. So we have a, a short-term trading range. It's attempted to break below the trading range. It's failed. It's attempted to break up into the trading range. It's failed. It's made one more low. It's it's kind of chopped. So so what we have here, if we have we have a market that's going down, but it's going down in a very unsatisfying fashion. So it's going down in a way that's it's kind of stinky. So what so any any time that we see price action that's kind of choppy and messy, it doesn't have to be in neat rectangles and triangles. We can say well that's a trading range of some sort. Now, if we've got a trading range of some sort, we can reasonably expect the market to start reversing from somewhere around the top of the trading range. Now, as we get down towards the bottom of the trading range, we've got this uh, outside period, shooting star with no follow through. We've got choppy mess. We've got a big gap and go. And, uh, and what we have when we have a trading range, and often you get a vacuum to the top of the trading range, because if I'm trading this trading range and and I'm planning on shorting it, the best time to short it is right here. There's absolutely no reason for me to get short here or here or here or even here. So oftentimes you see you see a very sharp move up to the top of the trading range, which we call a vacuum to trading range, and and that 
uh, that fakes stupid sh stupid uh, uh, longs into thinking that we've got a breakout trend reversal situation. But we, but one of the things we know about markets is that most often the trend continues, and that generally betting on the reversal isn't so smart. So what have we got here? We've got a vacuum to the top of the trading range. We've got a uh, we've we've got a failed attempt to drive the market down. This market should have made another attempt to break out, but the fact that it didn't, it gapped down. It tried to go up. It failed to go up. This is a market that um, this is a market that's in a trading range, but is a good prospect for continuing long. So I don't know if it's going to work out. This uh, this trade over the long term only has a 50-50 win rate, but the wins are bigger than the losses, which is which is why it works. So good luck with this today, and uh, and enjoy.